Logan here with Burris Optics, here to tell you all about things to consider when picking out a scope for hunting. In another video, specifically on things to consider when picking out a scope for tactical purposes, uh, we will cover all of those bases, and you can find the link to that video in the description below. But for the purposes of hunting, the main things you're going to consider when selecting a scope is one, the specific gun that you're going to be putting the optic on and the caliber of that gun. Two, the focal plane that that uh, scope comes in, which I'm going to cover here in a bit the type of turrets that's on the scope, the reticle that's in the scope, and then possible accessories for that scope. So five, ma five main categories to consider. I'm gonna start with the gun type and caliber because that is probably the most uh, important thing to consider when selecting a uh, scope for your hunting rifle. So if you're gonna be hunting with a handgun, for example, the kind of scope that you're gonna select is obviously a lot different than if you were to shoot a rifle. So we have extra long eye relief scopes uh, for handguns and scout style scopes uh, like this one you'll see here. And if you were to be shooting even within, even within a rifle, there's a lot of different calibers, right? So if you were to be shooting a 22 uh, for let's say squirrels or varmints, uh, that's another thing to consider. And I'm gonna touch on that a little bit more when I get down into the reticle portion. Um, but for now it is important to consider uh, because of the zoom range, right? So if you're shooting a 22, you're obviously not gonna be shooting quite as far as if you're shooting a 6.5 Creedmoor like this or a 300 Win Mag, for example. So the type of hunting that you're gonna uh, be doing really does kind of determine what kind of scope you're gonna select. As far as the size of the scope, there's kind of a few main things you're gonna be considering. One is the size of the objective lens, and that's the front bell here of the scope. And really what that determines is how much light the scope is gonna be capturing. Um, so if you're going to be doing a lot of hunting, right, is typically done in low light situations, whether that's in the morning or whether that's in the evening, you want a really large objective bell to kind of help capture all of that light. And then the other main part about the size of a scope that to consider is the zoom range. So there's everything from 2 to 10, 3 to 15, 4 to 20, 5 to 25, right, all these different choices. So, so how do you decide which one to select? Uh, and that, again, depends on how far you're going to be shooting. I think in general, people have a tendency to over magnify. People that hunt in the east or in the Midwest where their longest shot's gonna be maybe 150, 200 yards, those people all wanna shoot a five to 25 scope and there's just no reason for that. You're really limiting your field of view uh, by selecting such a large magnification range. So in general, I would say don't over magnify. For people that are hunting the Midwest and the east, a two to 10 or a three to 15 is more than enough power. Now, if you are hunting out west where you're going to be making those further shots, you know, 750, even up to 800 yards, um, it's, it's good to be able to have a little bit more zoom to, you know, get, get in tight on your, on your target. So I covered kind of everything there is to consider around the general size of the scope as it relates to what type of hunting you're going to be doing and the caliber you're going to be shooting. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about focal plane. And this is a uh, pretty technical topic. We do a separate video on focal plane, which again, you can find a link to that video in the description below. But I'm just going to cover generically things to consider. There are two different types of focal plane uh, that our scopes come in here. First one being uh, front focal plane. You'll also hear this referred to as first focal plane. The other type of focal plane is second or rear focal plane. Those are one and the same. In a first focal plane optic, What's happening is your subtensions on your reticle, right? So you have your crosshairs, and then you have a bunch of uh, ballistic drop compensated lines below on that six o'clock wire. Those subtensions are going to remain accurate no matter what zoom level you are on. In a second focal plane or rear focal plane, that is not true. So what's happening with a second or rear focal plane optic is as you zoom, your reticle is staying the same size, so your subtensions are changing. So when to use each kind, right? That's the big question. Again, if you're not shooting very far, if you're in the east or you're in the Midwest, which you know most, most hunters are in that situation, I would actually recommend a rear focal plane scope. And the reason I say that is you're not gonna be shooting really far distances where you have to worry about your holdovers as much. But what you do want is always to make sure your reticle is a good full size. In a front focal plane, when you change zoom, because the reticle is changing size, as you zoom out, the reticle becomes smaller. So if you were in a very dark situation where you know, it, you know, low light, you're, you don't want your reticle to be hard to see. So Midwest, East type hunting situation where you're not shooting, shooting very far, 
I think a rear focal plane or second focal plane is, is, is fine. If you're going to be shooting out west where you're shooting far, I always recommend a first focal plane. That way, if you're doing a holdover, you know that your BDC marks are going to be on at your varying distances. The third thing to consider when selecting a hunting scope is the turret options. Some of our turrets, as you'll see on this RT rifle scope here, have this really nice feature where you can pop them up in order to dial them, and then once you're dialed to where you want, you can lock them down. That's just one style of turret. Another style of turret you're going to see here on the Veracity uh, is called the Mad Knob system, which is available on our Veracity and our XTR2s. The Mad Knob system stands for Modular Adjustment Dials. So what does that mean? That means it's a very customizable system. So you'll see the custom turret I have here on the top, and you'll see the capped windage dial I have over here on the right-hand side of the scope. The MADNOP system allows you to either run this as capped or uncapped. So if you're in a hunting situation and you don't want to, you're not going to dial for wind, you're going to hold for wind, what you would do is you would just cap this dial, that way you don't have to worry about bumping your turrets at all. Now if you're shooting in a tactical application or if you have time to dial for wind, you can simply uncap this and you can make your dials for windage if you want. So the MADNOP system is a very versatile system. I think it works great for hunters and really, you know, if you're using your your gun for multiple situations for hunting and shooting, it's a, it's a great option to have. Now we do have an entire other video on the Mad Knob system. If you want to check that out, you can. We'll drop a link in the description below. For the hunter specifically, I really cannot recommend enough this custom dial system. So instead of doing calculations for mill or MOA or even trying to do holdovers on your reticle, what the custom dial allows you to do is dial specifically for the exact distance that your target or game is at Make that shot with your crosshairs, and then as always, our scopes feature a zero stop system that will stop you right on your 100 yard crosshair. So for hunting especially, this is, I can't emphasize enough how important that is. No, no trying to do calculations in your head and stressing out about that, just putting the crosshairs on the target and making, uh, focusing on making a good shot. Last thing I wanted to say about turret adjustments is parallax. Some of the older scopes will actually have the parallax adjustment up here on the end of the bell. The newer models, which you'll see here, have the parallax adjustment right on the side. What that's nice for is when you're behind the gun, rather than having to reach all the way up to the front of the scope, the parallax adjustment is right up here and easy to use by your other dials. So that's just another thing to consider when looking at the turrets of the scope that you're going to be selecting. The fourth thing to consider when selecting a rifle scope for a hunting situation is reticle. And I talked about this a little bit earlier in the video when I said it depends on what kind of caliber you're going to be shooting. So if you're going to be shooting a 22, for example, our drop time has a 22 specific reticle. That way those BDC marks, your ballistic drop lines on the six o'clock wire will be specifically calibrated for that 22 caliber. We also have them in a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is actually on our HD line of scopes, our signature HD line. So if you have a caliber you're going to be shooting, I would definitely select the reticle that goes with that caliber for the holdover reasons. Another thing to consider around reticle is the busyness of the reticle. If you're going to be hunting in the Midwest or in the East, you probably don't really have any reason to have a busy reticle for reading wind or doing holdovers because you won't be shooting very far. So I would say just keep the reticle pretty simple. Now, if you're going to be hunting out West, especially in varmint situations where you're going to be hunting in high winds, the more busy of a reticle helps you better read wind and wind impact. The fifth and final thing to consider when selecting a rifle scope are all the different accessories that you can put on it, right? You'll see this uh, one in front of me. This is my personal gun. You'll see I have a fast fire red dot mounted on here with a 45 degree mount. I have a bubble level mounted on here. There is all kinds of things you can throw on a scope to kind of accessorize it. You'll also see these flip caps. I have the custom dial. These are just a matter of preference. Uh, in a long range situation, the bubble level is very handy just to help make sure you don't have any cant in the rifle at all. Um, because as you go out to extreme distances, a little bit of tilt in the rifle will throw off your point of impact. Um, I mentioned earlier how much I do like the custom dials. I always recommend that for a hunting situation. Uh, why have a red dot on the side of a scope? That's more for a tactical or shooting situation where if you're zoomed in and you don't want to take the time to zoom out to reacquire your target, you can always just use the red dot by tilting your head to the side to acquire a target. So all kinds of options in the accessory department, that's really up to you. Uh, generally for a hunting purpose, you don't really want to put too many accessories on the scope because it's just going to weigh it down and have more for you to be carrying up and down the mountain.
All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, drop them in the comments below. We'll do our best to answer them and get you the right breast product for you. Otherwise, make sure to click the link right here for the next piece of educational material. As always, click the subscribe button to get more information on Burris and hit that like button.